Hello everyone. Welcome to UIS. Let's discuss today's prelims topics. Question 1 Consider the following statements about Parkinson's disease. 1. This is a chronic degenerative disorder of the central nervous system that mainly affects the motor system. 2. The disease is named after English Dr. James Parkinson, who published the first detailed description in an essay on the shaking palsy in 1817. 3. Parkinson's disease dementia becomes common in advanced stages of the disease. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is C. The motor symptoms of the disease result from the death of nerve cells in the substantia nigra, a region of the midbrain that supplies dopamine to the basal ganglia. The cause of this cell death is poorly understood, but involves the aggregation of the protein alpha-synuclein into Lewy bodies within the neurons. Collectively, the main motor symptoms are known as Parkinsonism or a Parkinsonian syndrome. Question to consider the following statements about rubber board. 1. The rubber board is a statutory body constituted by the Government of India under the Rubber Act 1947 for the overall development of the rubber industry in the country. 2. Head office is in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Which of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is A. Head office is in Kottayam, Kerala. Commercial cultivation of natural rubber was introduced in India by the British, although the experimental efforts to grow rubber on a commercial scale in India were initiated as early as 1873 at the Botanical Gardens, Calcutta. The first commercial heavier plantations in India were established at Thattekadu in 1902. Question 3. Consider the following statements about Dachin's muscular dystrophy, DMD. 1. It is a severe type of muscular dystrophy that primarily affects boys. 2. Females do not show any symptoms. 3. DMD causes progressive muscle weakness due to muscle fiber disarray, death, and replacement with connective tissue or fat. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. Muscle weakness usually begins around the age of four and worsens quickly. Muscle loss typically occurs first in the thighs and pelvis followed by the arms. This can result in trouble standing up. Most are unable to walk by the age of 12. Affected muscles may look larger due to increased fat content. Scoliosis is also common. Some may have intellectual disability. The disorder is X-linked recessive. About two-thirds of cases are inherited from a person's mother, while one-third of cases are due to a new mutation. It is caused by a mutation in the gene for the protein dystrophin. Females with a single copy of the defective gene may show mild symptoms. Question 4 with reference to perovskites, consider the following statements. 1. A family of materials with unique electric properties show promise for use in a variety of fields, including next-generation solar cells. To a perovskite is a material that has the same crystal structure as the mineral calcium titanium oxide, the first discovered perovskite crystal. Three perovskites have a nearly cubic structure with the general formula above three. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is C. The mineral was discovered in the Ural Mountains of Russia by Gustav Rose in 1839 and is named after Russian mineralogist Lev Perovsky, 1792-1856. Question 5. Consider the following statements about Association of World Election Bodies, AWEB. 
One this was founded in October 2013 in New York, USA. Two AWeb organizes capacity building programs for its member election management bodies, EMBs, and undertakes election visitor and observation programs in various countries to study election management practices and share knowledge with other member EMBs. Three under the slogan of democracy to grow for all worldwide, the AWeb Secretariat provides training programs for election officials of member nations. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. This was founded in October 2013 in Seoul, Republic of Korea. AWeb organizes the election management capacity building program for election officials to strengthen the election management capacity and manage their elections more effectively and professionally in the future. More specifically, the election management capacity building program aims to support the participants to study various electoral systems, discuss issues and challenges each EMB is facing and come up with solutions to the shared problems, to provide an opportunity to exchange good practices and learn an international standard of election management, to establish a network of election officials around the world and encourage them to share their experiences and expertise. Question 6. Consider the following statements about phosphorus. 1. Phosphorus is an exhaustible resource, predominantly consumed by the agriculture sector for fertilizer production, leaving a meager portion available for other industries. 2. Runoff from these fertilizers can result in algae blooms in rivers. 3. Phosphorus plays a vital role in the production of solar panels, computer chips, and lithium-iron phosphate batteries utilized in electric cars. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is C. Notably, phosphorus plays a vital role in the production of solar panels, computer chips, and lithium-iron phosphate batteries utilized in electric cars. With the global economy heavily dependent on roughly 50 million tons of phosphorus annually, the extraction and refinement processes have raised concerns due to their potential for significant pollution. To address these concerns, Norge Mining has pledged its commitment to employing carbon capture technology to mitigate the carbon emissions associated with phosphorus extraction. Furthermore, the phosphate deposits discovered in Norway also contain valuable materials like vanadium and titanium, both classified as critical raw materials by the EU due to their limited availability. Question 7. The Forest Conservation Amendment Bill 2023 is likely to be tabled in the monsoon session of Parliament. The key changes to the Act include 1. Inserting a preamble that underlines India's commitment to preserving forests, their biodiversity and tackling challenges from climate change. 2. Amending the name of the Act to ban Sarakshan Evam Samvarghan Adhiniyam, translated as Forest Conservation and Augmentation, from the existing Forest Conservation Act. 3. The amendments also say that the Act would only apply to lands notified in any government record as forest only after 1980. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. The amendments also say that the Act would only apply to lands notified in any government record as forest on or after 1980. The bill seeks to amend the Forest Conservation Act 1980. This is the legislation enacted to protect India's forests and empowers the central government to regulate the extraction of forest resources from timber and bamboo to coal and minerals by industries as well as forest-dwelling communities. A separate act, the Forest Rights Act, 
protects the rights of TR Vinbialis and forest dwellers dependent on forests for their livelihood. If notified forest land was legally diverted between 1980 and 1996 for non-forest use, the Forest Conservation Act would not apply. Forest land situated 100 kilometers away from international borders and to be used for strategic projects of national importance or land ranging from 5 to 10 hectares for security and defense projects would also be exempted from the Act's stipulations. These amendments were necessary in the Environment Ministry's view because private parties who wanted to develop plantations in degraded forests or restore tree patches were disincentivized to do so. Question 8 Consider the following statements about Namda art. 1. Namda craft is a rug made of pashmina wool through felting technique instead of normal weaving process. 2. Due to low availability of raw material, lack of skilled manpower and marketing techniques, the export of this craft has declined almost 100% between 1998 and 2008. 3. Namda is a type of traditional Kashmiri felted carpet that is created using pashmina wool and has colorful hand embroidery. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is A. Namda craft is a rug made of sheep wool through felting technique instead of normal weaving process. Due to low availability of raw material, lack of skilled manpower and marketing techniques, the export of this craft has declined almost 100% between 1998 and 2008. Therefore, through this special project under PMKVY, the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship MSD, has designed short-term training curriculum to preserve this endangered craft. The project has been implemented in 25 batches in three cycles of training. Each training program was approximately of three and a half months, which resulted in the cycles being completed in approximately 14 to 16 months. Namda is said to have begun in the 16th century when Mughal Emperor Akbar wanted to get a covering for his horses to protect them from the cold. The term Namda is derived from Nubi, the name of the person who came up with the idea of felted woolen carpets. It is believed that a Sufi saint named Shahi Hamdan introduced Kashmiris to the Namda art, he had come to the valley with the aim of creating new sources of earring for the Kashmiris. Namda is a type of traditional Kashmiri felted carpet that is created using sheep wool and has colorful hand embroidery. Thank you everyone. Do subscribe to this channel. Use code SPLIV to join. Unacademy.